say something, you say no. All right, welcome back. It's that time where we delve into our first conversation for the day. It's around uh, our Democracy Day. Nigeria is 21 years um, of undisputed, uninterrupted years of democ democratic practice. For some, they would say we have done well, and for others, they would say we haven't done well. On the show today, we shall be looking at uh, our years of existence, uninterrupted. How well have we fared? Uh, some would say it's an issue around the people. Some would say it's an issue around leadership. What exactly are the issues? Um, we have um, our guest in our Buja studio. We have Jide Ojo, who is a political analyst. He'll be talking to us on the program this morning. Jide, good morning. Yes, good morning, Jide. Yes, we'll also be speaking to our Lagos guest, uh, uh, whom we're expecting to be here anytime soon, but he could still speak to us via phone. We have um, Belo Osage, who is a public affairs analyst. Good morning, Belo Osage. Good morning. Good morning, Dave. So good to have you. We're expecting you in the studio anytime soon, please. Yes, the traffic has, has not been too friendly, but I need to make a little correction on my right. name. All right. Welcome to he's welcome open. to reality. Uh, Lagos is uh, right, opening up to realities right now. Uh, okay, let's begin okay. this conversation with uh, with um, Jido Ojo, whilst we allow Osigwe to concentrate uh, and um, come into to the studio. But before then, let's take a listen to how our political editor um, Karela Dende captured uh, the 21 years of Nigeria's uninterrupted democratic governance. Take a listen. The experience of botched previous republics by military coups in 1966 and 1983 may be responsible for the fear by many that the return to democracy in May 29, 1999 will be short-lived. I, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, 21 years after, the country has evolved substantially to have had smooth transitions of four different presidents. Despite these seemingly success stories, there are still worries that basic tenets of democratic rule are conspicuously missing, like free press, clear separation of powers, accountability, and transparency. Today in Nigeria, everybody agrees on the streets that the judiciary doesn't exist anymore the way we know it the executive branch everybody manipulates it as they like it's sad you know if i said this 20 25 years ago even under the military i would feel i would cringe if i said this under the military the media is um taking strength from the fact that it outlived them the, the military and so it will not leave any any um any political leader today that attempts to muscle the media no thanks to humongous cost of governance and lacks fiscal federalism. Things have changed. The Nigerian population has exploded. The resources haven't grown as much, partly because in Nigeria, we tend to have a pastime of thinking about how to share the cake rather than bake the cake. So the cake is getting smaller. We get governors who act like feudal lords. We get a national assembly that can, in the face of an approaching triple shock for an economy, actually vote to give themselves a better time when the economy that they are going to superintend over is about to collapse. You will see that these can be wicked people. These are people who just don't have an idea of what they are doing. They just don't know what's going on. Sadly, major infrastructural landmarks were constructed by men in uniform calling to question the essence of representative democracy where people entrust their votes to these men and women. We need to move, whether it's in terms of policy formulation, whether it's in terms of advocacy of the greater citizenry, whether it's in terms of implementation, I think we need to move towards an era and regime where we are obsessed with growing the cake rather than how to share it. 
why there is a consensus that military option belongs to the being of history, analysts warn that public trust must be pursued by public office holders for an egalitarian society. Kyle Del All right, welcome back. That was um, from uh, political editor, Kyle Delende. Yes, it's, the conversation is still around um, our 21 years of democratic governance. How have we fared? Let's speak with you, Belo Sigwe, quickly. Uh, yes, it's been 21 years of um, democratic existence. A small prize, but worthy of celebrating. What's your take? Hello, Belo, can you hear me? Hear me too. All right, so tell me, do you think we have any reason to celebrate our 21 years of uninterrupted democratic existence? Um, hello, Dave, can you hear me? On, yes, can we can hear, hear you. All right, for uninterrupted democratic rule, yes. But in terms of demo democratic dividends, in terms of returning back to civil rule, there is practically nothing to celebrate. But for the uninterrupted democratic existence for, for the past 21 years, yes, we've got to celebrate that. How be it, it has been a total shambles, a total collapse of its existing structures. There is absolutely nothing to celebrate in terms of its dividends. We all glamoured for democracy prior to, two, prior to 1999. And at the time democracy came, all Nigerians were believing that their life would be better for it. But you will agree with me that for the one year down the line, Nigerians have suffered untold action. Nigerians have lost their life more than ever before. Nigerians are more of, more of in the unemployment market more than ever before. So celebrating unbroken democratic existence, yes. But is there anything to celebrate in terms of its dividend? The answer is no. All right, um, um, Osigwe. We'll talk to you again. Let's listen to the opening remarks of GD Ojo in Abuja. All right. Hello, GD Ojo. I don't know if you Hello, good morning. Same. Good morning, Jide. Thanks for joining us. Uh, I'm sure you listened to Osigwe Bello, uh, a our guest via phone this morning. Uh, he's held up in traffic. But I don't know if you agree with his stance. He says it's not, it's not worth celebrating uh, 21 years. People will call it the crown year. It's a very important year for many individuals when you turn 21 or, very, or many organizations or companies when they turn 21. Do you think that um, it's worth celebrating? Let's hear your own remark on this one. For me, I think it's worth celebrating, whether in terms of uninterrupted uh, 21 years or you are looking at the dividends of democracy. Yes, um, it's still work in progress. We may not have gotten to the Canaan land. Um, we are not where we used to be, even though we are not where we ought to be. But there are some baby step successes uh, that we can celebrate. The fact that Nigeria is still a united country, uh, the fact that, uh, yes, um, we are the biggest economy in Africa, the fact that um, Nigeria is progressing, at least, uh, whether we want to say at a snail pace, but we are making progress. Moving slowly, be only afraid of standing still. Nigeria is not stagnant. We are making snake pace progress. It may not well be what many of us want. I, I want a revolutionary change. I want a speed up in infrastructural uh, development. I want to see better education, better health care services and delivery. I want to see better governance. But then we cannot say that 21 years of uh, return to civil rule has been a waste and that there is no dividends. Uh, under these uh, 21 years, we have Freedom of Information Act, which has tried to open uh, the space for accountability and good governance. Uh, that was not there before uh, 1999. Uh, it was true struggle from civil society that we have Freedom of Information Act. Today, 
uh, budgets of at least the federal government budget is being engaged robustly by civil society organizations. We have made the government to sign on to uh, what is called an uh, open partnership agreement. Also, you look at the National Disability Act. 27 million Nigerians who are disabled, angled, pressured, lobbied to have this Disability Act passed. Twice it was passed. Twice the previous president denied assent. But this administration uh, of President Buhari on January 23, 2019, signed the National Disability Bill into an act of parliament. Yes, you may debate what is the implementation uh, level of that. But it is to tell you that at least there is a framework for engagement by Nigerians uh, disability community. They cannot demand and enforce their rights using the National Disability Act. Look at the Police Equipment Trust Fund that the president just uh, inaugurated the board uh, a couple of weeks back. Uh, that was not there before. Previous attempts to uh, show up the uh, funding of Nigerian police had been thwarted, but uh, efforts have been made, and now we have a police equipment trust fund which will enhance security ultimately. Because by the time the private sector start making those contributions from 2021, we should be able to have an improved uh, funding for Nigerian security system, and that will mean improved security. Even though, as I know, that we are we are challenged. All right, I think uh, we lost that um, signal with um, Jideo Joy in Abuja. But anyways, let's, let's move to Port Harcourt, where we also have Dr. Ken Wenke, um, a political analyst, also standing by. Um, Dr. Ken, good morning and welcome to the program. Good morning, Dr. Ken. Good morning. Welcome to the program. Yes. Uh, I'm sure you had listened to our first two uh, uh, respondents, our first two guests. Uh, Musigwe believes, um, yes, for 21 years of democratic dispensation is worth celebrating. But for the dividends of democracy, uh, much is still uh, uh, being sought after. And even Jide also shares uh, the same sentiments. From your perspective, Dr. Ken, what exactly could have been the issue? Because many of them had said that um, Nigeria is not where she's meant to be. It could have been better. Let's highlight what the issues had been and let's see how we could get over uh, what the issues really are. From your perspective, what do you, would you say are the issues? For me, many issues. Um, yes, democracy uh, ought to have an end. And what is the, uh, that end? That the citizens are satisfied, that the, that the citizens um, have um, access to basic necessities of life. Yeah, if you talk about the democracy uh, of uh, 21 years, offering us um, some kind of fundamental rights, that citizens have rights you know, to express. If I have my right to express and I don't have basic necessities of life, so what, what, what kind of rights am I talking about? There are other countries of the world that are not democracies, uh, but yet, you know, their citizens have access to the, uh, I mean, basic necessities of life. And so what, what is the end of democracy? The end of democracy should offer, you know, the citizens, they know, the basic necessities of life. And so for me, 21 years of Nigeria's uninterrupted democracy has not been able to offer Nigerians the basic necessities of life. Today, we are still struggling with our health uh, um, infrastructure. You know, today we are still uh, challenged uh, with our security infrastructure. Today we are still, you know, grappling with uh, our economy and all that. You know, so, so many things you are talking about, you know, uh, of Nigeria's, uh, you know, democracy of 21 years. A child of mine that, uh, gave, uh, that was given birth in the last 20 years is an adult today. And so for me, you know, a, a, a democracy that ought to be an adult, you know, ought to, you know, fend for itself. A democracy of 21 years uh, as an adult ought to provide the basic necessities of life for himself, you know, for, for, for his all, all, all offsprings and all that. You know, yes, Nigeria has advanced in some ways, especially, you know, uh, given um, um, uh, the, the present administration, the efforts that it is making. 
even previous administrations. But we've not been able to do, you know, as much as democracy, you know, uh, should offer us. Because for me, you know, that, what, what, what is it that I have a, a rule of law? You know, the rule of law that, uh, you know, I, I have no access, you know, to good food. I have no access to sleeping, you know, well, you know, with my two eyes closed. You know, I, I have no, you know, access to basic necessity of life. So, so for me, the 21 years of Nigeria's so-called uninterrupted democracy, you know, has failed to offer what it ought to offer to Nigerians. And so it's not, it's not about, um, yes, celebrating something uninterrupted. Yes, why, if it's uninterrupted, and, and so be it. And so, yes, we, we want to say um, uh, Nigeria's democracy should be un uninterrupted, but then it should offer what it ought to offer to the people. And so when, uh, when democracy fails to offer what it ought to offer to the people, then it, 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 it has no basis as far as I'm concerned. There are people in all over the world. Like, go to the uh, United Arab Emirates. It's not a democracy. Go to uh, Saudi Arabia. It's not a democracy. But yet the citizens have the best means of life. You know, they, 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 today, you go to some countries, you know, people are out of work. Some people are having access, you know, to, you know, uh, um, certain uh, palliatives from government, you know, monthly and all that, provided you show some, you know, kind of um, uh, um, um, uh, uh, proof that either you were working before and that you have offered something, you know, to the economy. And so you have access to these things. But here we are today. We are grappling with uh, health infrastructure because today, the, the, whether you like it or not, COVID-19 is almost overwhelming Nigerians. And so we have no facilities, you know, to run to because Nigerians are stubborn about even keeping to the uh, uh, COVID-19 protocols. Time so when we run to, you know, when we are talking about 21 years of uh, uninterrupted democracy... Ken, if, if time permits us, Ken, we're going to break, break down, you know, these issues so sector by I mean, sector. You know, to, to and that is time permits us, Ken. Uh, you know, Let uh, me take you back to your comment year. earlier. Uh, let me take you back to your comment earlier where you referred to 21 years as adulthood. We know we're in the Fourth Republic. I want to know, you know, because in, we have transisted from, from um, adolescence to adulthood. Would you say, or are you trying to say that uh, Nigeria is far from, you know, we are we're far from being qualified for the rights of moving away from adolescence to adulthood, despite the fact that we are 21 years in democracy? Is that what you're trying to say? It's, it's, uh, uh, it should be clear to you that you fend for yourself, you know, to an extent. But today we are dependent uh, uh, largely on funding uh, on, on, on some countries uh, to fund our 2020 budget. And so I know that countries borrow if you must survive and all that. And so it means clearly, you, you look at unemployment rate in this country. It's growing higher and higher and higher on a daily basis. Look at the in insecurity. It's growing higher and higher. You see, yes, the present administration is doing a lot, you know, uh, to cushion the effects of, uh, you know, bad governance over the years. But how, how far can, you know, um, uh, an administration like this be able to clean up what has not been able to, uh, what has not been uh, well done in the past 16 years or so? And even the present administration cannot also say that it does not also have its own problems, you know, in, in trying to implement, you know, good programs to, you know, uh, bring a, a, a good livelihood for Nigerians. What I'm saying is that, yes, we have transited into adulthood. Adulthood means independence. Adult me, adulthood means that you have access to determine whatever you want to uh, have and all that. And so when you cannot offer such basic necessities of life, so what is the need celebrating that kind of adulthood? It means that, uh, you know, it has no basis to be celebrated because any adult should be able to offer, you know, a lot to himself and a lot to his environment. And so for me, as far as I'm concerned, you know, Nigeria has not fared well in the past 21 years of democracy. So we are just, you know, beginning. All we have is, oh, periodic elections. You know, gather people, you know, and then in the name of civilian administration and all that, period, four years, four years in. I, I, I call it a cyclic, uh, you know, um, um, a situation where Nigerians, you know, find themselves, you know, running to uh, vote for citizens, you know, for, for, for citizens who have uh, held sway over the years, after four years and all that, and then moving round and round, and yet nothing meaningful is offered to Nigerians. For me... 
uh, there's no basis for the celebration. I, I rather have, you know, uh, uh, something, you know, that uh, looks like um, um, civilian administration, but offers me, you know, the citizens, the basic necessities of life. All right, uh, Dr. Ken, we'll come back to you again. Uh, let's quickly speak with um, Belo Osage um, via phone. Yes, Osigwe rather, Osigwe, yes, via phone. It's um, obvious that um, there is a consensus among all our guests today uh, that there really isn't much to celebrate at 21. Now, let's start looking at what the issues are. Are we looking at, um, well, I was listening to um, a speaker and he says um, he attributed uh, our lack of achievements to failure, leadership failure and systemic failure. How would you want to react to this? All right. First, first off, I'd like to correct an impression that in this country, there is nothing like a leadership structure. What we have heard, even though we are practicing democracy, has been a, a rulership structure that has siphoned most of our common patrimony to family affairs. Now, you will agree with me if you had had time to listen to uh, one of the ministers and one time uh, party chieftains in the person of Chief Haudu Ube, and um, you heard him telling us in the floor of the National Assembly that um, uh, prior to uh, the dispensation of our democracy in, in 1999, he, he, he referred us back to uh, uh, 1986, where, according to him, he believed that the downtrodden of this nation actually began from when the, the then uh, 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 um, military president introduced what was known as structural adjustment programs and all of those other big programs that actually siphon uh, most of our common patrimony, uh, programs such as People's Bank, if you still remember. So we, we've been dealing with this problem ever since. Now, coming to the 21, 21 years of unbroken democracy, like I said, wonderful. But in the case of our own, in the case of Nigeria, you can't even refer to a 21 years old man as an adult. So I'd like to correct that impression. You've not seen an adult that is still pampered. You've not seen an adult that is still being uh, uh, spoon-fed. You've not seen an adult that is still carrying feeding bottle. And that is the state, the comatose state of Nigeria. I will submit to you, sir, that as much as it hurt me not to be in your studio this morning, there is so much that is raging in many of our hearts. The institutions are failed. There, there is more negative uh, 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 preponderances to our common interests as a nation. Between the first 16 years of the political party that ruled Nigeria from between 1999 to uh, 2015, there was massive corruption, untold corruption. And when this other political party came to bear, came to, came to the scene, with the promise of change and with the mantra of hope, they became water. They became draconia. They became vampiric. I can tell you, sir, the next 21 years of Nigerian existence, if we don't do something now, will be worse than what we are seeing. Because having taken time to study the structures of Nigeria and the players of its political system, just a few days ago, you heard Ita Inan still in the floor of the National Assembly saying to Nigerians that the Northerners are more the beneficiary of the oil blocks in this nation. We have never had a more disunited Nigeria like we have now, both in moral front, in tribal front, and in religious front. And like I said, there is an hydral monster that is already staring at the face of this nation. And what is that monster? The level of greed of the current existing political rulers in this nation will never help Nigeria to make an headway. Let me give you an instance. Some time ago, I listened to the, to the Minister of Transport, who was the one-time governor of a particular state. 
describing the various countries where his children are. You knew, just as I know, that the president's children also never had their tertiary institution education in Nigeria. The vice president, as I'm talking with you now, had, if not all of his children, most of them outside of Nigeria. And that has become the trend. Now look at this. These are children that could not even pass work here on their own in Nigeria. Running outside the nation to school. And after some years, you will bring those children back to Nigeria to come and become the general managing director of the Nigerian of the NNPC. You bring their children to become the central bank governor of Nigeria. Children who couldn't even pass their work here in Nigeria. But because of the of the massive level of corruption which has hit in this nation so deep, you find them taking their children overseas. Now, if your rulers are schooling their kids overseas, how would they ever give attention to the educational system in Nigeria? You had the leader of the of the PTF, that is the presidential task force for COVID-19, uh, Boss Mustafa at the time, admitting on national TV that he never knew that the head state of Nigeria is in a coma two state. Now, if we continue this way, where are we going? So there is nothing to desire about the 21 years of Nigerian continuous uh, uh, democracy. How be it? We are grateful to God because you see, the only solution that this nation has now is what the Holy Book has for us in Luke 1 and in verse 37. That for with God, all things are possible. But left to the institution of man, we've all failed. Uh, we are the civil organization. Well, let's talk to our other guests, you know, in our different um, stations. Let's move over now to Abuja and see if Jide Ujo agrees with you. Uh, Jide, right. some Nigerians, Jide uh, Ujo in Abuja, have said that uh, Nigeria is not really practicing democracy, that what we are practicing is quasi-democracy, uh, you know, not total democracy. I want to know, would you attribute these feelings of some Nigerians alongside w w what uh, Mosi Gwibelo just said to the fact that um, we really do not have a constitution that uh, was democratically created. We are riding with the constitution handed over to us by the military. Well, that may be part of the problem. I will not deny that, but it's not the only problem Nigeria faces. Um, we have issues around attitude. Our attitude to governance is very poor and we lack trust in the system. You see, yes, we may say um, we face the challenge of corruption, bad leadership, and all of that. But even at that, look at the exponential increase in the number of religious uh, worship centers. Whether you talk of mosques or churches, look at the number of converts and all of that. But while we are growing in religiosity, or sanctimonity, we are not going in the right attitude to uh, our society, our community, and our, our state and our country. Uh, so you, 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 we, we can pontificate for all we know. Uh, yes, uh, they, they, we have had presidents who did not deliver on dividends of democracy. Is it each of those presidents that would deliver or the it's the people who are working with them in different strata of the society. The current president has 42 ministers, plus the president himself, we have 43. And these people also have senior special assistants, special advisors. They have over 500 uh, ministry departments and agencies. All of them having heads, have boards, have uh, you know, executive, whether executive director or executive secretary or director general. All of these people are collectively responsible for our comato states in Nigeria. So, you, you, yes, you may say the box stops at the table of the president, but I believe if all of us, both leaders and followers, have the right attitude to governance, we will not be where we are today. Yes, people will want to demonize the Constitution and say, oh, the Constitution is uh, draconian, it was handed to us by the military, it was Decree 34 of 1999. Yes, 
But this same Decree 34 of 1999 have undergone series of amendments, including the last one where the President signed five alterations into law ahead of 2019 elections. But the operators of the system are the problem. It is not so much the grand norm. People who oppose the system, people, this idea of big manism, don't you know me, I'm the one in charge. People wanting to take advantage of their position in society. That is where the problem lies. We may pontificate, we may call names, we may, we, we, we may say all we care. If the kind of religiosity we exhibit on Sundays and Fridays, if we bring it to bear on leadership, at, a ve at various level, whether at family level, at, at societal level, uh, you know, uh, traditional rulers leading very well in their domain, not conniving with bandits to rob and demean their people. The, if, if the governors are pulling their weight, if the local government chairpersons and councillors are pulling their weight, if the ministers and, and commissioners in the states are pulling their weight, if everyone saddled with responsibility is pulling their weight and acting right, including our religious leaders. If everybody were to be acting right, we will have had better society. Unfortunately, when people get elected or appointed into position of authority, the first thing they say, oh, my time has come. My time to enjoy has come. My time to profit has come. My time to, to, to become a billionaire has come. Gone are those days when people are stealing in millions. Today, people are stealing in billions. Unfortunately, while the, 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 the different aspirations from 2000, from the President um, Obasanjo's regime down to the current one, has created several anti-corruption agencies from ICPC to EFCC, Code of Conduct, Bureau, the Nigerian Police, uh, Fiscal Responsibility Act, Public Procurement uh, Commission, uh, Bureau of Public Procurement, all of this, if every one of them who are involved have done their bit the way and manner it should be done, we will not be in this state of malaise, in this, in this state of morass, in this economic quagmire. But when people see position of responsibility as position to amass wealth, and even their religious leaders, their community leaders, their traditional rulers celebrate them even when they are stolen common wealth, then we will not get it right. So problem is attitude not necessarily the laws. Attitude to, to leadership is what we need to correct. All right, Yudi. Uh, let's, let's, let's continue on, on, on this path. You, you talked about the, the need for a systemic change. Uh, people should change their attitudes to leadership. Let's look at the four elements of democracy. Uh, political system for choosing and replacing governments, uh, protection of human rights, rule of law, and then active participation of people in politics. 20, 2003, we had about 69% of um, active participation in our election. And in 2019, we had just 34.8%. Looking at all those indicators, uh, does this not exactly question for you our democracy? Yes, Jide, if you can hear me. Hello, Jide. To go by the political in DC to part globally, world to vote at election. and three election. So you can. Electoral management body uh, represented uh, participation of credible electorate. These are sex top figures. These are figures that may not, when you drill down, you may feel, you may have a feeling that these were padded figures. Because right from all efforts to give equal opportunity for electorate to participate in governance, to participate in election, some people voluntarily will not even collect their permanent voter's card. Some who collected their permanent voter's card is looking for somebody to come and give them 5,000 Naira or 2,000 Naira or 8,000 Naira before they will vote at elections. 
That is a wrong attitude. And that's why I said our problem is largely attitude donor. Because if as an electorate you are waiting for somebody to come and bribe you before you cast your vote, this is a vote you cast at no cost to yourself. Government has made provision. You collect uh, your permanent voter's card for free. You don't have to buy it on like when you want to collect your international passport or you want to collect, uh, you want to hand, uh, get a driving license where you have to pay some 10,000, 15, 20, 25,000 naira. For permanent voter's card, in order to encourage mass participation, you get this for free. The last election, Nigerian government spent minimum of 242 billion naira to conduct that election. What is the, what is what was the outcome? It is still the same political class who, who undermined the process, who, 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 who fomented trouble, uh, created sense of insecurity, violence, so much so that people got scared and didn't want to come out to vote. So if we change our attitude to politics, to elections, to governance, you will see that gradually we will overcome all of these challenges. If people will cease to take advantage of their different offices, whether elective or appointive offices, if they will work in national interest, we will have better society. But to say that, yes, um, I, I mean, you talked about the rule of law. The, the laws make room for rule of law. Last week or thereabout, or two weeks ago, the president just uh, issued the executive for that third uh, to uh, compel state governors to respect constitutional provision that says that uh, direct funding comes, uh, that the funding of state legislature and judiciary should not be a first line charge on consolidated revenue fund. In an ideal society, that executive order was unnecessary because the constitution has been altered way back in 2018. The president has sent it to it. You don't have to set up an implementation committee that will sit for another year and now issuing executive order. But we do know that the governors will observe that constitutional provision in breach. Look at the constitutional provision that says that democratic uh, elections is guaranteed at the local government level. But what did the governors do? What are the governors doing? They will not conduct elections. They, will, they cease to conduct elections. Rather, a flagrant abuse on the Constitution, they will go and set up critical committee, sole administrator at local government level. Yet, the Constitution has been altered. The Constitution has said that the system of governance at the total level of this, uh, of this country should be by democratically elected leadership. But these people don't care a hoot. And when you call them to order, they say, go to court. And they will go up to Supreme Court. Even Supreme Court will give a judgment. Some of these governors will ignore it and say Supreme Court is just saying their whole. And that is why I'm still insisting on issue around attitude. If we have the right attitude to governance, and in our own respective spheres, uh, spheres of influence, we do the right thing. We learn to respect the law. We obey the law. We, uh, when you are saddled with a particular responsibility, However little, however small, you don't take advantage of that. Look at this COVID-19 that my brother Osigwe mentioned. You still see people stealing the palliative. This is something that is meant to ease the burden and, and the suffering of ordinary people, the masses. You see this on council. All right, um, it's sad we lost connection with Judy Ojo, but uh, thank you so much for the point we're trying to raise. People still stealing palliatives, uh, despite the fact that we are fighting coronavirus. Thank you so much, Judy Ojo, uh, public affairs analyst. Thank you for your time with us. I understand you're back. All right, make your submission then. I'm very good. All right. Thank you most kindly, Judy. Now let's head over to our Port Harcourt studio where we still have Dr. Ken Wake there. Uh, Dr. Ken, the closing remarks of um, GD talked about um, governance and politics and so far in our conversation, it looks like um, the three guests, three, three of you have alluded to the fact that uh, politics and governance has failed in the last 21 years. But let's, take a, let's break it down a bit to politics or in politics. Uh, before now, we saw uh, political parties like the United 
Party of Nigeria, the National Party of Nigeria, ANPP, GNPP, PLP, and these political parties in way back had some political ideologies which Nigerians could hold them, you know, for. But now it looks like our political parties do not have these ideologies that Nigerians can hold them to. Uh, the last election, we saw over 90 political parties registered and participated in the elections. Now, tell me, do you think from the political parties we, uh, we have lost uh, what it means to have a political party and have political party ideologies? All right. I understand we lost it now with uh, Dr. Ken Wake. So let's um, go to uh, other guests who has joined us via phone. Osigwe Bello. Bello, if you had a question. Uh, before now, we had political parties that had political ideologies, and Nigerians could hold them you know, on these ideologies that they had made on the platform of their parties. But nowadays, it looks like the political parties we have have no ideologies. In the last election, we saw over 90 political parties participate in the elections. So do you think a problem, one of the problems we will face politically in the country is the fact that political parties have no ideologies that Nigerians can hold them uh, to? Yes, the, um, the leadership of any country that practices democracy is predicated on the political platform that produces them. And as it were in Nigeria, almost, hello. Hello, can you hear me? Very loud and clear, Bello. All right. And so it's obvious, therefore, that the current political parties at the feast today are majorly the problems this nation has. There is none that have any, any direct political ideology like the parties you've mentioned in time past, when you make mention of UPN, when you make mention of NNP and all of those political parties of the past. One of the ideology of the political party for which Obafemi Awolowo uh, stood up for was free education, for which some of us were beneficiary. Tell me one single political party in Nigeria, out of the various political parties that are recently been streamlined, tell me which one had the good of the Nigerian interest at heart. I can tell you, Sma, that the only ideology almost all the political parties in Nigeria have now, ranging from PDP to APC to APGA to whatever other political parties there, there is to be, the only ideology that they have now is how to grasp power and share the Nigerian patrimony to themselves. Let me tell you, man, as it is in Nigeria today, can you point to any political leader whose ideology has framed, has benefited the framework of Nigeria? There is none. If you go to Ghana, for instance, you will hear of the late Kwame Nkrumah. If you go to Tanzania, you will hear of great names. In Kenya, you hear of uh, Jomo Kenyatta. In South Africa, you hear of political fathers like Nelson Mandela. If you go to Burkina Faso, you will hear of Thomas Sankara. Tell me one political leader in Nigeria that this nation has built its framework round about. There's none. At the time, we were even thanking God when we have somebody like uh, 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 the Zeke, who at the time was referred to as Zeke of Africa. Remember that man because of the sheer greediness of political dispensation ended up as the will of Nietzsche. The same thing with Aminu Kanu. And these people are built on this framework that has not benefited Nigeria in any way. As I tell you now, this nation is crying for a political father, a political figure that can come out boldly and point Nigeria to a better way of development. Every other political party we have today. Now, look at what is even happening in my state, in Edo State, for instance. Having opened the political space by INEC, you begin to see the wrangling that is going on between the current governor and his predecessor. 
And you see how they want to rope in Pastor Eze Yamu. And so these are the type of political parties that we have in Nigeria that has not given hope and aspiration to the youth. Can I shock you when we say Nigeria is 21 years? I, I, I said in my earlier submission that at that age, it is true that some of us had left the university at that time. But in this current dispensation where you have, for instance, in the National Party, the National Youth Leader, whose age is between 51 and 53, then you begin to ask, where is the place of the Nigerian youth in nation building? So the whole framework has failed. Way forward, we've got to look inward. We've got to believe in the human capacity that God has blessed this nation with. Like I said in my earlier submission, there has never been a time that Nigeria has been so divided like as it is now. When you have in a national setting where almost all position is bequeathed to a particular tribe, and, and so you see the high level of nepotism that nobody had ever believed we, we play out in this particular dispensation. But let me also say this before my time runs out. There were civil organization individuals who stood out in various dispensations to condemn various administrations in terms of their poor policies. Where are they now? I still remember one particular one, the Patitos gang that was, that was beheaded by Professor Patutomi. Patutomi, who so many of us respected at the time, saved Nigeria and was even jostling to become a governor. Most of these people in their various programs condemn existing governments as it were then. Needless for me to tell you of Ruben Abati. If you have listened, and I believe those pleas are still in their archives, there was nobody who condemned successive governments like Ruben Abati. Even the same government of Goodluck Jonathan that he condemned, he ended up becoming the spokesman for that government. And where is it today now? What are they saying? So you discover that just as individuals in government have failed the nation, certain individuals who have also played uh, as godfatherism has also failed this nation. So way forward, all Nigerians must begin to think inward. We must take this, the destiny of Nigeria into our hands. Every time I talk about this nation, Nigeria, I talk with so much passion. It's the only nation we have. Can I also give you some, some, some statistical data? Nigeria is the sev seventh largest nation in terms of population out of the 232 nations of the world, with over 205 million people living in this nation. But I can tell you, Sma, statistically, the level of po poverty stricken people are ranging above 85%. You know, Many of us who are poor, even though we, we, we have the privilege yes. of rectifying this malady, are also sold their souls on the platter of 2000 and 3000 when it comes to such time when we had we should have had a good political dispensation in terms of using the strength of our votes. So it's painful. Yes. It's nothing to write home about. Most time when you think about the space of Nigerian development, you want to cry. And that is why all over the world, the black race has been subjugated, has been reduced. You see what is happening in America today? Because we can't stand up even for ourselves back home here. So it's a, it's a painful development. The political parties have failed us. They have failed us. Yes. They have, I mean, you, like I said about... Edu if you can hear now, me. If you can hear me. Yes, uh, it's a good okay. thing we've been able to establish that um, we, we have experienced um, failure in leadership and also um, some level of systemic uh, failure. Now, when you talked about yeah. um, uh, a faulty framework, I'm sure you're also talking about uh, the, system, the system. Now, So going forward, um, Belo Sigwe, how do we correct all of these failures uh, that has brought us uh, this far? I mean, um, it is not uh, an ex exciting time for our democracy, but this is where we are as we speak. So what, how can we correct all of these failures? So leadership failure to systemic failure to a faulty framework like you mentioned um, going forward? Yes, thank God we made mention of systemic failure because in the first instance, we hadn't gotten systems in place because for any country to strive towards development, there are four barometers that must be, I mean, four yardsticks that must consider. The first is the national income, for which Nigeria has no problem with. 
The second is attitude, which is one of the major bane this nation has. The third is systems, like you have said. The systems are failed, and the fourth is institutions. And even though there are institutions, like you have institutions that are fighting corruption in this nation, you will agree with me that such institutions have become the bulldog to certain people who parade themselves in power. So until we allow this for this for uh, what I considered the four steps towards development, and of course, economically, that is what every nation must attain. You must attain a sustainable national income that is in your GDP, such income that you can use in taking care of your nation, and then attitude check must be in place. And Nigeria and successive government has battled with attitude check. Some time ago in 1985, there was this government, okay, prior to 1985, you had the then military head of state in, in, in General Buhari coming out with what was known as war against indiscipline. Those were, were barometers. Those were, those were uh, rampant and run holes trying to check attitude, attitudinal problems. But it failed because if you as a ruler set up principles and rules and you are not governed by such principles and rules, those principles must fail. If, 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 if you move forward, you discover that successive governments have attempted to address attitude problems, but they failed. Because, for instance, you won't ask me not to go look for an imported rice when you, who promulgated the law, is surviving by the same imported rice. So there is no way you allow such rules and such laws to hold sway. You, 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 you can't promulgate laws from the National Assembly. And then we discover that those who are supposed to upheld the law are breaking the laws. At one point in time, those whom the laws are meant to govern will also rise up against the law. So, way forward, we must all look inward and begin to trust God. Remember, I've told you, the human institution in Nigeria has failed this nation. And until God begins to raise up righteous minds, people who have the fear of God to come to governance, people who will say, hey, something I've just noticed, the elite down north, the elite down north also know that the dispensation that we are in have never represented federal character. Some of the elite down north, because it's all the way. government. As we, yeah. All right, let me, before, I, I think you're trying to get into the next question I want to ask you. And this has to do with a word that has been resounding in the ears of many Nigerians. A lot of Nigerians have been talking about this a particular word when we talk about restructuring. That's the word that has been on the lips of many Nigerians. Now, there are arguments that uh, the presidential system of government doesn't work for Nigeria. And some have said we should go back to the regional uh, kind of government where it's actually cheaper to run that kind of government. Do you hold sway to that argument? Um, I, I, my, my decision will border on both sides. Because even if you return back to regional government like we had in the days when Awolo War was in charge of the Southwest and you have uh, the South Ghana of Sokoto as it were in the North and all of that, it still borders on the people who are going to play the leadership roles. So whichever way, the presidential system or the regional system uh, uh, kind of government, if you have the wrong kind of people like we have today, there will still be this problem of inadequacy, this problem of brain drain, this problem of never looking into this nation and seeing the good that, that they are in. I remember in one of the clips in Patito's gang, it was Professor Patitomi. Sorry that I'm mentioning his name, but of course, because of the respect some of us had for some of them, it was Patitomi who said, and at, at that time I was 14 in, but now I agree with him, who said at that time, for Nigeria to get it right, we will need another 50 to 100 years. And I said, no, it shouldn't be saying like that. But today, what that man said is actually the truth. Restructuring must come to bear. 
if Nigeria must stay as one single entity, you can't negotiate restructuring anymore. You can't negotiate it. Restructuring is the only way forward today. There have been too much of, of, of resources control bequeathed in the hands of some few powerful individuals. The level of cartel that is existed in Nigeria is such that when anybody tries to break in, you break in with your life. And all of that must change. People can't talk today because of the fear for their lives. The economy has been hijacked by certain few individuals. The political space has been hijacked by certain individuals. And until these spaces are released into the hands of the people, Nigeria will continue in the way it is going now, irrespective of what system of government we practice. Can you imagine a National Assembly that cannot challenge any bill that is passed to them by the presidency? I ask the question, sir, those who sell the president, because there's something we must understand here, man. There is a difference between people referring to a, a government as e-government and our government. For the past 21 years of this democracy, I doubt it if any true meaning Nigeria will refer to any government, past and present, as our government. It has always been the government, the president. And so those who are telling the current president, even though on a moral ground and on an individual basis, the president may be a very good man for those who are selling him. How are they marketing him? When you listen to people like Semi Adesino and how he played down Nigerians and Nigerians' interests, when you listen to people like Sheu Garuba, and, and these days I think uh, Garuba seems to be talking less. Why Femi is amplifying his voices? Referring to Nigeria as tissue paper in one of his interviews. So when you have a government that are not sensitive to the plight of Nigerians, this pain will continue. Look at our educational sector. There's nothing to write home about. Look at the human capital development. There's nothing to write home about. In Nigeria today... All right. Um, Belo Prosegue, uh, we apologize for having lost some contact with you there. But I, I want to believe that uh, you've made quite some very salient contributions and uh, you've asked quite a number of questions uh, that we are hoping that um, Nigerians would uh, begin to answer themselves. It's about time we begin to take ownership of our country and uh, we begin to take ownership as individuals, ensuring that um, it becomes a better place for all of us to live and not just leave it in the hands of the political um, leaders and um, as he likes using the word um, rulers, he hates to use the word leaders. He believes that what we've had in the last 21 years are rulers and not leaders with um, the government, not our the government, government. Not, not the government, not our government. Not our government. You know, so it's, it's a sad narrative. But going forward, we're hoping that um, all of this will change. People should begin to get more interested in what happens in in the government, in our government, not uh, the government, our government. And uh, maybe most probably we'll get it right. Uh, I'm going for. Well, I'm really praying that uh, we shouldn't wait for a hundred years uh, before we can get it right in Nigeria, uh, like uh, Pato Tommy had said a couple of years back. But we're really hoping that we could get it right sooner. Yeah. In as much as you say, people should also get involved in the, you know, in politics, the grassroots politics and government. For those who Nigerians elect in certain positions, they should also know that they are going there to serve and not to be served. Uh, so it's important that as we still mark the 21st anniversary of Nigeria's own interrupted democracy, uh, it is time to look inwards and know what we've been getting wrong for the past 24 years and to right these wrongs going forward. But uh, th once again, thanks to our guests, Osigwe Bello, Jide Ojo, and Dr. Ken Weke. We sincerely apologize for uh, that uh, breaking transmission with our poor tackled guest. Uh, hence, we cut off um, communication with him. Yes, I, I like something that um, Frank Aibogun said um, in that little clip that we played before the, the program, the show, the conversation began, where he said um, that the national cake is shrinking.
Uh, nobody needs to tell anyone right now that the national cake, cake is shrinking. Do we still have the cake? Uh, well, we still have oil um, at um, selling below okay, forty dollars per cake. barrel. Uh, at a point in time, it was over a hundred dollars. Now it's less than forty dollars a barrel. It is shrinking. It is shrinking. Uh, so it should be about taking ownership, and it should be about being ready to serve, not going there because of the cake. Yes, you could enjoy some level of good life being in government, but paramount in your mind or should be the fact that you are there to serve the people. Okay, uh, we'll take a break and we'll come back. We shall continue our conversation. Don't go away. More conversations for you. Stay with us. Say something. We'll say no. 